guys. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Good. Good. Glad we sorted out the, the audio issues out there. That was all my fault, but we are good. <laughs> and that's fine. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Can you guys each introduce yourself and tell us where you're tuning in from? Yeah. Hey, everyone. I'm Kirit Tadaka. I'm a product manager on the SageMaker team. Uh, I'm in Seattle. It's also super hot here, unlike what you normally expect from Seattle. Uh, but as a product manager, what I do is primarily work backwards from customers' needs and help build tools that make them a lot more efficient at building machine learning applications using SageMaker and hopefully delivering a lot of business value. So it's awesome to be here and talk about some of the exciting stuff that we, we just launched. Thanks for joining. Ram, do you want to go? Sure. Thanks, Kirith. Um, hey, everyone. I'm Ram. I'm a ML architect on the SageMaker service team. So I get, I'm get i lucky to work closely with Kirith and other awesome PMs who kind of bring these products to life. And then I take these features and then evangelize them basically with our customers and users out there that might be interested in MLflow. Managing MLflow coming to SageMaker is one of the most exciting launches recently and something that we've wanted to display in the field. So excited to showcase that today and then answer any other questions SageMaker related. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Well, should we get into it? Do you guys want to tell us what you launched? I know it came out, I think, this week, last week. Yeah, it was Wednesday. Wednesday it came out. And yeah, really excited. So what we launched is a fully managed MLflow service on SageMaker. Uh, so for those of you who may not know, MLflow is a popular open source tool used to manage the experimentation lifecycle when building machine learning models. And more specifically, what that means is like when you're building models, it's super iterative. You're not 100% sure of what model to use. You're not 100% sure of how to train that model. So it requires a lot of trial and error. And when you're going through all of this trial and error, either yourself or with your team, it gets really complicated really quickly to manage all of the experiments that you're use, that you're doing and then figuring out which experiment was actually the best one for what you're trying to do. So this tool helps manage all of that for you. Now, one of the challenges that people have when using this is figuring out how to get it to work with everything else that they're doing in AWS. Uh, that could be using services like SageMaker, or EC2, or other services. And you need to take this open source tool and make it work with everything. Uh, so oftentimes, customers spend a lot of time figuring out how to use EC2 or ECS or EKS and get MLflow working on it. And it takes a lot of time and effort. So what we said is, hey, we just want you to focus on the actual machine learning and let us take care of all of the setup and the infrastructure for you. Mm -hmm. So we've created a really easy way for people to use MLflow and have it really nicely integrated with everything else that they're doing uh, in SageMaker when building machine learning models. So maybe, awesome. maybe if we break down the problem statement further, like let, let's... Let's take maybe a customer example. Maybe I'm a financial services customer and I'm building a complicated uh, credit model or risk model, some sort of fraud detection. Um, I've got all this data. I'm already using Amazon SageMaker for training jobs and hyperparameter tuning and inferencing. And I'm managing each of these uh, bespoke components on their own. H how does MLflow uh, or managed MLflow for uh, Amazon SageMaker bring this all together? Yeah, great question. Um, so Let's say that you're, you know, you're part of this company and you're a data scientist working with the team and you're now tasked with coming up with this uh, specific credit model. So the first thing that you do is pick an algorithm and then you train that algorithm using SageMaker training. And then when you train the algorithm, there are some results that you'd see. It could be the accuracy of the model. It could be the loss of the model. It could be a variety of other metrics. Now, you're not necessarily sure whether it's enough to meet your business need you actually have to test it you have to train you have to you know run the model on real data get some data back and then you know determine whether the model that you built was sufficient for your needs now imagine you're doing this and you don't like the results that you got so now you need to do it again and when you do it again you probably tweak some parameters right maybe change the learning rate maybe even change the algorithm type you do it again now, at the same time, let's say you and I are on a team and I'm doing the same thing with a different algorithm. Now, how do we manage and compare and collaborate with each other so that we finally end up with the best model? So all of the SageMaker training jobs that we're all running, we can keep track of it all in MLflow. 
we can all log into MLflow, look at charts and nice visualizations to compare the different performance metrics across each of our training job. Finally, pick one and then say, hey, I think this model is worthy of going to production, so I'm going to register it in a model registry. Now, once it's registered in that model registry in SageMaker, I can really simply go and deploy that model to an endpoint and actually start testing inference on that model. And then if I'm happy with that inference, I can then take it and deploy it to production using SageMaker, integrating it with CI CD pipelines and monitoring that model in production, and then have the entire life cycle starting from my idea, which was, hey, I want to build a credit model, to actually having that model working in production and serving my end users as, as that company. Got it. Got it. Well, that sounds like we need to see it to believe yeah. it. And I think it might be time to go into a little bit of a live demo. I've already proved that we only do live here because I, <laughs> I was glitching the whole first five minutes. So it's your turn to prove that it's live, Rom, and not glitch, but show us how great your, sure. your walkthrough is. It does look like awesome. It's up. We are good. Ram, do you want to walk us through? And you know, we're just going to pester you with questions if you don't mind. Of course. Keep it super informal. Informal. Feel free to interrupt me at any times. So I know there's a lot of questions um, that might pop up as we walk through this process. But once we get here, right, where we want to land at, and the crux of where we'll start this problem is the SageMaker console itself. SageMaker, as Kirith alluded to, is a bit of a managed ML offering across different parts of the ML lifecycle. There's not really only one part to machine learning. There's data preparation, there's training, there's MLOps, as Kirith alluded to, and then inference. And SageMaker kind of encapsulates all of that into one service. For today, what we'll focus on is the MLOps sides of things. So that's really operationalizing your machine learning workloads into production. And for that, MLflow is a very handy tool that we've made managed for this. So where you can get started or where you can work with this tool is if you go to the UI here, you'll see there's Studio, which is the SageMaker IDE for machine learning development. And you can think of this as you can bring your normal Jupyter Labs, Python scripts, any kind of data science related workloads, you can bring it to this environment and execute. And there's also access, right, to all the different SageMaker features um, that are part of our MLOps portfolio as well. So I've pre-created a domain here and a user. This is essentially your working environment. You can create your own setup here within the admin configurations. But if we go into the studio page, you will be getting taken to this UI right here for SageMaker Studio. And as I was alluding to, there's a number of different features here that are both SageMaker and non-SageMaker related where you can work with the MLOps toolings and features, and then also different development environments that you can get started in. Oh, awesome. For our purpose, right, there will be two main applications that we'll take a look at today. Um, one is JupyterLab. This is what many data scientists are normally familiar with. This is where you can execute kind of your scikit-learn, PyTorch, Nowadays, it's all LLMs, that type of code, um, locally with the compute environment that SageMaker provides. And then the next part for us is, is the managed MLflow offering here. And with MLflow, right, at its crux, there is a tracking server. And what this tracking server essentially is, is all these different experiments and kind of training jobs and runs that you have, what MLflow will provide by this tracking server is kind of that metadata and storage for you, along with the UI to kind of track and compare these different runs. And what SageMaker has done on this managed offering is made it a little simple where you can click create right here. You'll see I have some existing servers here just for the purpose of time. But if you click the create button right here, you can say tracking server demo, and then you can pick an S3 path of yours that you want to essentially enter. And with this come the different tracking server sizes as Kirith was alluding to, depending on your use case and what you might be dealing with. But once this tracking server is created, you basically have the bare bones or kind of the plumbing for you to start get started with your ML experimentation itself. Wow. Because before this, when I I, I recreated these steps earlier today, it was like you said, um, half, half a minute, two clicks, and you've created your tracking service. Prior to this, I saw there was a tutorial, you can containerize ML flow, run it in Fargate, put a load balancer, and now you've got the service. And now we're once again, abstracting away that undifferentiated heavy lifting for managing the infrastructure so you can focus on your ML lifecycle. Exactly. As a data scientist, I came from a data science background. I was not an ML engineer. I did not want to think about containers and I did not want to think about the runtime environment or things of that sort, because that was taking away from my core work, which is 
I have my model. I want to train it. I want to see which model is the most performant in my run. So what we do here is we really want to take out that hardware and container level layer for you, as you might have had to do so traditionally. And you can simply create the server and then get right to work in terms of your data science scripts and stuff. Got it. And for those of us who, you know, didn't look at the previous version, I think I glitched. For those of us that didn't look at the previous version, what what are we building on the back end that makes this managed? And does the customer have, you know, if I open my AWS account, can I see those still and they're running, but I just don't have to take care of them? Or are you guys totally taking care of everything? I can't even see it. It just exists as a single line on my bill that we're using. These yeah. we, uh, we fully take care of that for you. Um, so on your bill, you see one line ML flow. You don't have to worry about all of the things that went in the back end to make that possible. Um, so we fully integrated with SageMaker and AWS services that you'd need for any uh, managed service. Like ML flow is integrated with IAM. It's integrated with EventBridge. It's integrated with CloudTrail, integrated with SageMaker's model registry, notebooks, training, inference. So all of that we have done for you. So from your standpoint, it's one API, you make a call, create your server, you're ready. And we give customers the ability to store all of their sensitive data in their own accounts. Mm -hmm. So we don't take any of your data, like your models and everything, they're all in your account owned by you and we just interface with it through the managed service. So you get the benefit of managed services, but you still have the safety and security around your sensitive uh, data. And exactly as Kurt said, if I click on one of these tracking servers, you'll see the IAM role configuration for your studio user. And then also different things such as the S3 bucket that you essentially um, have your model data or artifacts pushed to. So all of this is like available and accessible for you. So think of it as very similar to any security concepts on the cloud. We make that very easy to set up via this create button essentially where you can control where you have your data access, you can control which buckets have what type of models, and then you can essentially go from there in terms of all this. So now I've got to ask the obvious question. We have this tracking server, managed infrastructure, part of MLflow. Mm -hmm. Why do you need a tracking server? What does it do? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Completely fair question, right? So um, this tracking server, right? At the end of the day, we need a place to catalog our experiments. And what we do with this tracking server is we give a central, you can almost think of a repository of sorts where you have your different runs. MLflow, a common term that you'll hear is a run, which is your different kind of training jobs or iterations that you might have. And then there's also a model registry that will be present within this tracking server. And that's where you can catalog your models. So the different models that you've trained, you might have one that you want for your development environment, then one for a production environment. So this tracking server is a central kind of metadata source that you can almost think of. Um, and the UI, which I'll reflect, will probably bring, which I'll bring up after is probably going to give a better eyes to everything I'm saying, but think of it as a central store for all your different experiments and model registry. And that's why you have different sizes too, depending on the experiment scale that you have, that you'll select on. Got it. That was necessary and enlightening. So I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> and I think what we can do is why don't we go to our Jupyter Lab environment? There will yeah. be some code there for those who are interested in that, but then we'll put all of this to a visual with the UI so that I'm not just rambling on or um, saying a bunch of terms that don't actually exist. But right here, if we come here, great questions, by the way, feel free to keep asking them. Right here, we have our JupyterLab environment. And um, this is, like I said, a compute space within your studio um, notebook where you can have whatever necessary hardware behind it. You have your traditional JLab environment, which I've already created here. And um, here, these notebooks are all available on GitHub. So we'll share this resource afterwards for those who want to try these out directly. We'll see how we can work with this new managed MLflow offering on SageMaker. Everything here will be executed in Python within this kernel. And what we'll do is we'll essentially, just like you would locally or in a traditional manner, install MLflow and then also install the open source SageMaker MLflow package. And keep in mind, you're not actually doing anything with this package. This just being installed in the runtime environment will by default allow for you to catalog experiments and different models into the SageMaker MLOps services and features as well. And we'll take a look at that in the UI as we walk through this. Here, what I'm doing is I'm working with the SageMaker and Boto3 SDKs. These are just Python clients to be able to work with the SageMaker service. And then I also have MLflow imported after I've installed it. And if you notice, I actually grabbed something here 
known as a tracking server ARN. So after you've created your tracking server here in the UI in MLflow, you can grab that specific ARN that you're working with and tell the SageMaker SDK basically, hey, this is where we're going to be cataloging all my different experiments and my different models. This is my resource essentially. Just to just to you know make sure we're asking the, the brilliant questions here. An ARN is an Amazon resource number. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. So everything in AWS, when you're using it in this kind of format, some way or another is providing an ARN so that way you can link it to maybe something else. Is yeah, it exactly. a simplified way to put that? Thank you. Exactly. Just think of it as a tag for like your resource. Got it. Awesome. Yep. So I specify that here and I've set up this environment and the key thing is everything we were capturing data wise is pushed to S3. And then here, if you come here, our data scientists will actually see some very data science common code. We're actually pulling down an Iris data set here. What we're going to do is we'll pull down an Iris data set. We'll have a scikit learn classification type use case, and then we'll build out some code for that. I grab that data. I push it to S3. Like I said, that's a bit of the data store for everything SageMaker related. And I'll upload that data. And then for training, it's a very simple process, and I'll get to that script in a second. But I essentially say I have a scikit-learn model. This is exactly what I'm dealing with. I'm going to pass in a training script that would mimic my local MLflow code with my scikit-learn model. And then I'm going to pass in any hyperparameters. And then most importantly, I'll also pass in this environment variable, which is essentially saying this is the tracking server ARM. So what I'm going to be telling my script or my training job that I'm conducting within SageMaker is, this applies to this exact tracking server. So any runs or experiments, I want push there and also to SageMaker's MLOps features by default. And if you see in this training script, I'm essentially installing just MLflow and the SageMaker MLflow plugin. Once again, there's no new APIs or new calls or anything with the SageMaker MLflow SDK right here. This is merely saying, make sure you push these runs and catalog them to the SageMaker service by default as well. And if I come in here, you'll see this is very similar to just any local MLflow code that you might be able to grab. I grab my data set, I'm just preparing it. I grab the tracking server ARN, and I'm saying this is the URI that I want to push my experiments to. And then if you notice, this is just an MLflow API call, just like any other you would locally. I'm gonna set this up and say, let's log these experiments. This is what I'm dealing with. I've grabbed my data set, and now I'm going to train this classification model on top of it. And the key part here is after that, we will want to grab this model data. Because like Kirit alluded to earlier, let's not forget the overall ML journey. It doesn't just start with preparing the data, training, and then we're good. We've tracked it in ML flow. Realistically, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Just gonna say, so you guys say I don't need to be an expert. Mm -hmm. This is feeling a little experty. <laughs> so if you if you break this down a little bit less in the, the data science terminology. Right. This is a notebook that it comes with all of this information in here. Everything's annotated and tagged in different ways. So if someone in our audience, you know, was trying to give this a go, mm -hmm. they could use this as, you know, a first step. Or is this a, a second or third step into the learning process? Mm -hmm. So the steps that you want is the tracking server ARN, which is like I said, you just need an S3 path for where you dump your data. And okay. then your, the name of your tracking server. Once you have that, like I said, the idea is um, you, you can run this notebook exactly end to end. The only thing you're going to have to change is your tracking server ARN right here. So I could literally change this to enter tracking server ARN. And I think that's what it says in our GitHub that I was running this beforehand. But um, okay. you can enter ARN here. And for the more advanced users, if you have a model that you directly want to plug in, just plug your code in there. If not, and you're new to this, just run this end to end and you'll understand how the flow works essentially. Okay, that's really helpful. Anyone in the audience, if you do have questions, we are watching the chat and we want to see your questions too. I love asking questions, but I love it more when I get to ask your questions and not my own. <laughs> yeah, no problem at all. And just on that point, like I was saying, all we're doing here is after we've cataloged our run, which is essentially our training job, we also just want to grab our model artifacts. and. To simplify this, just think of model artifacts as your model data. After you've trained or fine-tuned a model, you need a way to capture that model's metadata, right? So what we do is we gap, capture that model data, which for scikit-learn is a job lib, but for more advanced users in PyTorch, it might be a .pth. In our LLM worlds, it might be safe tensors, anything you're doing. So this can be any type of model. It can be an LLM, it can be a traditional ML model. All we're doing is grabbing that model data, 
and we're going to say we want to register this within ML flow underneath this name right here, um, which is SageMaker job experiment model. And after this training job kicks off and runs, right? This is just a SageMaker training job that will execute. That training script gets executed and we can access this in two different contact points by default, just by that installation with the SageMaker MLflow package. We can access it first in the studio MLOps features and then the MLflow UI. So let's first go to studio and we'll see if we go to models right here, I named that SageMaker job experimental, right? In my training script, if you see here, I will have some code saying, can you track this model or register it? And once again, this is just grabbing the model's information or data, you can think of it of that sort and capturing that and then tracking the version. So every time I've run this, sorry, I didn't mean to shift there. Every time I've run this, it's been six times by now, each time this model data by default without me writing any code will get pushed into this version tracking right here for these different versions. So this model group has been created by default for me and I can see the different model versions I have available. And in a real world use case, right? The reason this is valuable is let's say I've conducted a hundred runs across different sets of data with my model. I want to see what the most efficient or accurate model is according to what I've tracked. So what that plugin does is by default, it will catalog all of these models in a single repo or place for you to look at. And the same applies within this experiments tab right here. If you go to um, SageMaker experiments, this will lead us then to the ML flow UI itself. So right now we're looking at the different SageMaker MLOps features that we automatically account for. But if you're a traditional ML flow user and you want to just stick to that UI, you can also go to experiments, hit this default tab, or also hit this ML flow tab, and you'll see a UI has automatically been created for you. And this is a different tracking server than before. So. Sorry, I think there was a question. Got it. I mean, I we only have about two minutes left, so I do want to make sure you're hitting everything that you want to show. Sure. Uh, yeah. When you, I do have a question also though. When you show all the versions and how many time you how many times you've run them, where where does the comparison value come in in the UI? Is there, you know, if you were to run different models, is it showing some sort of quantitative yeah. way to see? Yeah. So exactly right here. This is the MLflow UI. So just to kind of capture the other part of it. If we click and open that MLflow UI from the tracking server, mm -hmm. we'll see these scores are automatically captured for us. So awesome. this is just one run, but let's say that you have seven or eight different runs, right? You can plot all these values next to each other. So you have a very quantitative in a simplified way of saying model one has an accuracy score of 0.25, model two has an accuracy score of 0.7, and then model three has the best score of a 0.8. So these numbers by default, they're all cataloged for you. And then you can plot them yourself and see these model metrics and different artifacts that you essentially have. So this is for how we collect data associated with training. In the one minute or so we have left, does, it, does this connect to other upstream services in SageMaker, like deploying inference endpoints? Exactly. So that model data exactly that we talked about, that we registered, right? You can take that directly. That was that model version that we saw. We can grab that source path for the model data. If you see here, I'm just grabbing that tracking server ARN and that registered model that I pushed. I'm going to grab that model data. And then if you see here, this is all SageMaker inference constructs. So the SDK might seem a little abstract. I'm just gonna say my input and output looks like this. I want to create a SageMaker endpoint. This is what my input and output looks like. This is where my MLflow model that I just pushed lives. Create a SageMaker endpoint for me and then run inference. And it's that simple of a step because there's tight integration there. And if we go to deployments and click endpoints, you'll see that I have a live scikit-learn endpoint that's already been created for me just by simply pointing towards that MLflow model data from the latest model we trained. Wow. Interesting is an understatement. Thank you, Marcel. <laughs> Thank you so much for showing us this. This was so helpful. No, of course. And any questions offline, feel free to share. And like I said, all this is accessible by GitHub for those who didn't have time for the entirety of it. Yeah, we aren't losing you guys entirely. There is still someone in the chat answering any questions about this. So if you've been listening to the show and you come up with a question in the next couple of minutes, in five minutes, in 10 minutes, in 15, we're still here and we can still answer your questions. So this is not the end of learning about this, but we do want to say thank you to you guys for showing us this demo and congrats on the launch. I'm sure you could, you're going to get some much needed sleep this weekend. Um, I feel your pain. 
And I am really glad you guys joined us. Robbie, any final questions? I think it's just another great example of fully integrated ML ops on AWS, fully managed, but connected to all the services developers already know and love on SageMaker. So great example, great demo, Ram, and uh, thank you both for joining us. This is yeah. awesome. Awesome. Thanks for having us. Yeah.